Okay, thank you, uh, respected chairpersons. So my topic is on IVAS guided calcium accretion assessment. And then uh, I think Raja will talk on OCT and Sunit will talk on physiology. Is Dr. Banerjee here? Sunit Pachin? Pachin Gore. Okay. So this is uh, data from a very old paper, and this is Mints, uh, Gary Mints at all. This is circulation 1995. And at that time, IVAS was not as developed as what it is uh, nowadays. But however, what uh, he set out to find out was uh, in, in lesions in 1,155 1, target lesions, it was a study examining uh, whether calcify, uh, calcification was there or not. And uh, it was a study between uh, angiography and IVAS. And uh, in these lesions, we know that uh, calcium is uh, present in, uh, it's very ubiquitous. It is present in uh, uh, most of the coronary lesions. We have a calcium score that tells us about presence or absence of coronary artery disease. So it, it may not be significant in terms of intervention, but it is present. So this was a study and uh, they looked at target lesions uh, except in saphenous vein grafts uh, and lima uh, arteries. So these are native coronary arteries, 1155 target lesions, and they looked at the lesions both by IVAS and angiography. And what they showed was that IVAS in 73% of the lesions, there was calcium and when, uh, when you examine by IVAS, but however, if you examine by angiography, it detected it only in 38%. So IVAS is a much, much more uh, sensitive uh, imaging modality when you are looking at calcium. And sometimes you won't be able to see the uh, calcium on angiography and IVAS will uh, show you. Uh, in terms of uh, how many quadrants are affected, whether it is severe, whether it is moderate, uh, this all these data, uh, IVAS is more sensitive uh, than angiography. It also tells you whether it is superficial, whether it is deep, whether it is a combined uh, superficial and deep. It tells you about the length of the calcium. It tells you about, an, increasingly we have learned new things. It tells you, tells you about calcium calcific nodules. Calcific nodules was not known at the time of this paper uh, by Mintz at all, but nowadays we know how to look at these things and uh, how to uh, strategize in terms of intervent uh, PCI. And this is a much later paper by uh, Wang and Matsumara, and this was uh, published in Jack Imaging 2017, and uh, this was uh, a study evaluating target lesion calcification assessment via angiography versus IVAS versus OCT. And this was across 440 patients with stable angina. And the IVAS versus angiography detection differences were consistent with findings as previously reported by Mintz et al. Uh, so this was 1995 data, which was validated again in 2017. And uh, this data showed that I was detected calcium in 82.7% of the lesions with a mean of, uh, with 127 degree mean angle of calcium versus angiography, which detected it only in 40.2% of the lesions and uh, OCT, which detected it in 76.8% of the lesions. So these two papers, uh, they are for just our understanding how powerful uh, imaging tool IVAS is in terms of detection of calcium. And if you are doing uh, angioplasty uh, and if you are uh, suspecting that uh, this lesion, there is a calcific lesion, IVAS is an excellent tool uh, and I will show you why. So angiographically visible, non-visible calcium at IVAS maximum calcium angle greater than 180 degrees. And the summary of this is that lesion with calcific R for greater than 180 degree measured by IVAS, the main difference between those visible versus non-visible on angiography is, is calcium thickness. And this is a calcific lesion imaging assessment thickness and reverberations on IVAS. We now have OCT, which is uh, which we know has a better resolution than IVAS, and it has certain advantages over IVAS. 
and I'm going to show you uh, the comparative uh, the compar comparison between OCT and IVAS here. The main advantage of uh, OCT uh, is uh, when you are assessing thick calcium. And in IVAS, what you find with thick calcium is you cannot see anything beyond it. But in OCT, you will be able to see something. In thin calcium, again, uh, regardless of thick or thin calcium, you are not able to see the structures beyond. But here you can see it very nicely. Thin calcium in both these pictures, you can see, you can see beyond it. But in this picture, you can see that you can't see a lot. But nowadays, uh, if you if you put this on uh, if you put this on dynamic imaging or you do a pullback, what you look for in cases of thin calcium are reverberations. So if you have, so you can see one reverberation here, one reverberation here. And if you have reverberations, this means that this is thin calcium. Uh, this is not thick calcium. If you can't see anything at all, then it is more likely to be thick calcium. So this is a, a way of uh, looking at it because we look at three things. We look at the arc, we look at the thickness, and we look at the length. In deciding and grading uh, the severity of a calcific lesion about whether it will give to uh, conventional uh, balloon dilatation preparation or whether it needs more uh, calcium modification by either rotablation uh, or IVL uh, and uh, cutting balloons uh, and stuff like that. So again, this is uh, again a um, uh, picture and I think it is very instructive here. So you look at thick calcium, you can't really see anything. If, if you have a thick, these are corresponding images, IVAS and OCT. On the other hand, if you have thin calcium, you can see these reverberations. So these, so you can look at this and you can think, uh, oh my God, will my stent expand or not? This is a, a big arc of calcium all around. But if you, if you are seeing reverberations here, you think that probably it will. And the easy way to find out is actually inflate your balloon and see that whether the balloon inflates or not with, with, before jumping into some kind of uh, serious calcium modification. This, on the other hand, uh, is less likely to uh, be modified by balloon dilatation. What will happen is if you inflate your balloon, this it will expand in this direction. You will get a stent expansion in this case, but it will be sort of an eccentric uh, expansion. So target lesion uh, detection, calcium detection, angiography versus uh, IVAS versus OCT. Uh, I think we have already said this, but I will read out the summary. Evaluating in a contemporary st imaging study, this is again Wang and Matsumura, target lesion calcification assessment via angiography versus IVAS versus OCT across 440 four patients. With stable angina, 30.2% of IVAS detected calcium. Calcium was either not visible by OCT or was underestimated by OCT, mostly due to superficial OCT plaque attenuation. So this is an important thing. Uh, there are some images in OCT, and we have faced this, uh, where you think, uh, what is this image? What am I looking at? And uh, uh, because you won't be able to see the uh, you won't be able to see the classical images that I showed you, like this or uh, like this concentric uh, calcium. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, calcium that is uh, that has two borders there uh, with a uh, with a lighter intensity in between the two borders. You won't be able to see it, and Ivas will always see it. Ivas sees it better. So this is this is the advantage with IVAS. IVAS will always tell you that calcium is there. And now we have a OCT based uh, we have a OCT based calcium scoring system, and this is by Fujino et al. published in the Euro Intervention Journal 2018. And you look at as I was saying, you look at the angle, the thickness, and the length of the calcium. Angle by angle, we mean the arc of the calcium. So if it is less than 180 degrees. It is not that significant because the vessel has scope to expand in one direction. If it is greater than 180 degrees, you give two points. You look at the thickness. If this less than 0 0.5 millimeter, you can measure the thickness very well on OCT, which you can't do on IOS 
Okay, so they can afford this. And if it is greater than 1.5, it is one, milli, one point. And length greater, less than five, zero points greater than five. So you can have concentric uh, calcium, but the length is also, it plays a part, a significant part in, in your assessment and you're giving points to it. Uh, the most important, however, is the angle. So if it is 270 degrees or 360 degrees, this this is this is very very significant and so we have a total score of zero to four points and as the score goes higher the lesser is your likelihood of stent expansion if you haven't cracked the calcium so if you come to ivas you can as i have told you there is this obvious uh, problem with ivas is that it always does, it always cannot give you the thickness of the calcium uh, you can easily calculate the arc of the calcium. You can say whether it is thin calcium or thick calcium by looking at reverberations. You can see, you can, you can diagnose uh, this, this appearance here, whether it's a calcific nodule or not, and you can easily uh, size the stent diameter. And then you, you, can, you do a long view layout and you can, you can measure the length of the calcium. So you can measure the length, you can uh, measure the arch, you can have an idea whether it is thin or thick calcium. You can detect calci calcified nodule here, though not as well as, echo, uh, as OCT, but these are the things that you can do. And based on that, you have this IVAS guided calcium lesion scoring to predict stent expansion. And this is by Akiko Mehra, published in Circulation 2021. And uh, so we begin with, do, is there angiographic calcium? Yes. Is the IVAS uh, uh, ca maximum calcium arc greater than 270 degrees? Yes. Is the calcium score calculation 0 to 4 greater than 2? Then it is significant. Consider greater than or equal to 2. Then it's significant and you consider atherectomy. So for the first two, yes, you have one point, uh, angiographic calcium, I was greater than two, uh, 270 degrees. For these, you have one point. Okay. And if it is greater than two, then you go for this calcium uh, expansion uh, by, uh, by atherectomy. So the effect of atherectomy on stent uh, uh, expansion, you can see that if it is a balloon only uh, procedure as the calcium score increases, FOBA does not work that well. So there is, a, there is a crossover point between one and two there. And you can see that atherectomy works much better uh, in regards to stent expansion. And the expansion is given on this side, 70, 80, 90, 100. So this is uh, an example of a patient with a calcific lesion. And you can see that uh, the two types of rotabar has been used, 1.25, then 1.5 non-compliant balloon, and then a rotabar with a two. And you can see the difference. So after the, after the rotabar, you can see that uh, some amount of calcium has been scraped off because now you can see the reverberations. But the lumen is not large enough, so there, a two millimeter bar has been used, and then this is the final result, and you can see that the stent has been well expanded. So I will finish with a case here, and uh, this is a case that was shown live uh, this time. How many minutes do I left? Okay, I have one minute. So this was done in Bhubaneswar by Dr. P. K. Shahu, and I was his I was interpreter, and I will show you the case briefly. So what he was doing was old inferior wall MI, RWMA in the RCA territory, and he had done the RCA. And then after that, there was very bad disease in the LAD. And uh, I will show you. Uh, so this was the RCA result. And then you can see the LAD. The LAD is very badly diseased. There is, you can see angiographic calcium. There is osteoproximal uh, disease uh, in the LAD. And you can also see that the left main is disease, and then there is a bifurcation uh, stenosis at LAD D1. So this is the uh, lesion that uh, was being treated, and uh, we started off by doing IVAS, and I will show you the IVAS, not this one. So this is the IVAS, uh, and you will see uh, that uh, this is the this is the IVAS pullback. Sorry. 
and uh, I will just uh, so there is my commentary there. I have muted the commentary. And what I am saying here is that we can see this arc of calcium here as we are going up. And as we go up further, you can actually see, if you look at this region here, you can see the, the length of the calcium here. And uh, this is the, the critical region that needs to be treated. And we are looking at that region. We are looking at the arc of the calcium. We are coming into the left main. And uh, what uh, my interpretation in this case was that this could probably be cracked without doing, uh, sorry. This could probably be cracked without uh, doing uh, IVL or rotablation. And uh, so what we did was, uh, so this is the, uh, this is the initial part of the case. Uh, what Dr. Sahu did was he did a LAD D1 bifurcation uh, by a crush technique, mini crush technique. And then uh, we. This is uh, the IVAS after that. And you, you can again see uh, that we are measuring the distal landing zone. So we are now going to stand the LAD. And here, if you look at this long view layout here again, you can still see this calcific uh, zone here. So for those of you who are in the chair, this is, this is the calcium region that we can see. And we have not yet modified this. So we are going to modify this. And uh, we looked at that region and we saw reverberation. So I said, just uh, go ahead with a, a balloon dilatation there. And... Uh, and I'm going to show you what they did. So, how many slides you have? Just I've finished. This is this Thank is you. just a run. So I'll take two minutes. So this is again we are looking at that uh, osteoproximal LED, and uh, so you can see they have implanted the stent there, and as we had uh, as we had predicted. The stent is well expanded there. And uh, the patient was very sick going into failure at that time. And we were asked to, we were asked by the moderators in the case to finish it quickly. I think Dr. Samuel Matthew was there. He said, just finish it quickly. Uh, the patient was not tolerating this uh, dilatation in that osteoproximal LAD very well. But uh, here, I think if we had to do rota and a lot of other uh, dilatation here, the patient probably would not have tolerated that as well as this simpler procedure. So I was helped us in assessing this lesion. We did some post dilatation and I think I will show you the final result. So this is the IVAS and this is just from the proximal LED uh, into the left main. And uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm scrolling up and down and uh, showing the uh, the various parts of the stent that was expanded. You can see it. You can see that this, this osteoproximal part of the left main stent is quite well expanded. And uh, I think we are at the end here. So I think that is the end. So that is, there you can see Dr. Sahu congratu being congratulated by everyone. So this, this is uh, what we can do with IVAS. Uh, we can uh, look at a lesion. We can tell you the length. We can tell you the arc of the calcium. We can look at the reverberations and predict whether it is going to crack or not. Uh, we can look at calcium nodules and tell you that this needs a different type of modification. And all these have a bearing on the success uh, of the case. And uh, I think I was, uh, it, it is a very, very powerful tool. We have uh, newer uh, modalities of IVAS. The catheters are more, uh, you can negotiate the catheters across these lesions better. And if you have a calcific lesion, IVAS should be very high up on your list in terms of intravascular imaging. Thank you very much.